Hi everybody! Thanks for stopping by to check out the latest from Sailing Emerald Steel. In this video we're going to be sharing with you some of the things that cruisers get blamed for. And before we get started we'd like to thank all of you that took the time to leave a comment and a thumb up on our last video. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much guys. In this video I would like to discuss with you uh, things which we feel are very much misunderstood and uh, also replying to some of your comments. So here are some of the things which our cruisers usually get blamed for. The first thing is, what makes you think you deserve anything for free? Uh, in most cases what they think that when you come to a harbor, uh, you use their facilities and so forth, uh, you should pay for it. In a lot of cases that is the truth, but I can only talk about us and also uh, many cruisers we met in the past and many of them live uh, the way we actually live. So the first thing, when you come into the harbor, the harbor, in most cases, it's a, a natural harbor. Now, harbor get dredged uh, periodically, but when they dredge a harbor, they do that for a large ships. Uh, they do not dredge that for a, a sailboats or a pleasure boats. Uh, second thing is, in a harbor, they build docks and the facilities, but in our case, we do not use them. Uh, first thing when we go into harbor, we find a secluded location where we can drop our anchor, and then when we go to shore, we take our dinghy and pull up on the beach. Once we pull the dinghy ashore, we don't lock it to a cleat on the dock, we just wrap it around a rock instead. When we use our rowing dinghy, Jules gets some good exercise rowing back and forth. We try not to use plastic bags from the grocery store and usually use our cloth bags and backpacks instead. So as you can see, we're really not using any of those facilities. The next thing is, we make our own water, so we do not take a water from the harbor. We make our own electricity, so we not uh, plug into any power on the shore, and so on. If you point out about taking a trash, yeah, we take trash to the shore, but believe it or not, in most cases, we take a trash to the same store where we purchase our grocery. It's about this much trash every couple of days, <laughs> so, very little trash we generate. So that means that we go to the grocery store, we purchase uh, food and a necessity, we bring the bags home, and then uh, next day or uh, two, three days later when we go back to the store, we usually have the trash which was generated by that uh, stuff we just purchased, and we bring it back with us on the way to the store. So we gave them a business, and uh, in a repayment, we <laughs> use the uh, facilities for dumping the trash. Now, we do go uh, empty our holding tank in a public pump outs, but even for that, when we buy a diesel or we buy a propane or we buy a gasoline, we pay a pretty high taxes on it. So you can see nothing really come for free. So those people who think that we come to the harbor and we get stuff for free, they are kind of misinformed. That is not the truth. Now, let's see what else they blaming us for. We were last video we were discussing anchoring in Hawaii. Some of the Hawaiians wrote it back and hey, you come here, destroy our corals, you pollute the place, and so on and so forth. So let's see. You're talking about cruisers come to your islands and pollute. How about all those hundreds and hundreds of hotels, thousands and thousands of tourists who come down there and create pollution? Think about all those uh, cruise ships. They dump in the ocean tons and tons of uh, waste overboard. The big ships which dump or they bilges tons of oil into the ocean. And you're talking about the pollution. How about the big cities when the uh, sewer pump station uh, breaks down and they pour uh, millions and millions of gallons of the uh, sewer, raw sewer into the ocean. So you know what, it's a kind of insulting when somebody says something and the cruisers are the one to blame. Now, in a world we have uh, 6 billion people of population. When you take an amount of cruisers, really it's a handful of them. 
So, and the reality is this here. When I drop the anchor, yes, I might uh, disturb some coral in the vicinity where I'm anchoring, which is maybe only a few square feet, which that coral gets regenerated pretty Usually fast. unintentional, though. We always try to anchor away from the coral. Yeah, we but try to anchor. In, yeah, very good point. <laughs> we do. Very good point. Usually we're looking for a nice sandy patch, because that's the kind of place where your anchor doesn't get stuck, foul, and so forth. So, but let's go back to the point, okay? We have a today a big problem with the corals dying all around the world. Like, for example, great burial reefs in Australia. Now, you know very well that has nothing to do with the boats. That has strictly to do with the man-made pollution and a global warming. Now, Ocean acidification. Yeah, uh, that is not done by a handful of cruisers, but by millions and millions of people on the shore. So you see, while authorities try to change the laws and regulations for uh, cruisers, they use that as an excuse, when in reality they themselves are the one who creates all that pollution. Uh, take a look, for example, plastic, okay? Uh, we have uh, tons and tons and tons of plastic in the ocean. Actually, they have a... Uh, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Yes. You know then well that was not created by the cruisers, because actually cruisers carry with them the really minimum which can be taken because there's just not enough room in a boat. And when we when we sail the oceans and that we ever see any plastic buoys, nets, whatever is out there, we always go out of our way to try to pick it up and take it out. So I think most cruisers are actually beneficial to the environment in that respect. And to tell you the truth, when the cruisers get together, they actually uh, go and brag who can uh, save and uh, keep a cleaner environment the better. When we're sailing because so much stuff is packaged in plastic, we take a gallon container and we push all of our plastic debris into into that gallon container so by the time we are finished well a lot of people ask what we do with our trash while we're out here sailing and um, all of our plastic we, we get we save a couple of empty jugs here like one gallon jug and then we just push the plastic into the jug and it's amazing how much plastic can actually fit in here I think I've had one of these jugs that's been going since we left Hawaii and I've been just all the plastic we've been generating is pushed in there we push it in pretty tight there's a lot of plastic. Yeah. And that's a two weeks since you left Hawaii. Yeah. And then um, for cardboard, cardboard and paper, we toss overboard and food products and cans and glass. And that's it. That's what we do with our trash. Okay, so much for that. It's 7 o'clock in the morning, and our alarm went off about 15 minutes ago. This big ship right here in front of us. So, uh, same way I can say, we actually lived on the boat for uh, 35 years. Yeah. It is, a, <laughs> for example, we make our own water. And even before we made our own water, uh, we never used more than seven gallons of water a day. Seven gallons of water. Now, think about it. So, you know what? It's very, very unfair when people uh, blame uh, cruisers for uh, those things which are actually uh, created by the people on the land. And so many times we've gone to different anchorages and met other cruisers and they, they all go to the beach and have a garbage pickup where they all pick up all the trash that's left on the beach and the shore. So. Because after all, all the beaches are actually our front or backyard. Right. So we really care about it, you know, to keep things clean. When we bring a dinghy to the shore and we walk to the street, any trash, any kind of ga plastic cans or bags, we always pick it up and deposit in the trash cans because we are very, very conscious. Uh, how many times we come to shore and we see a ladies here, for example in Coronado, exercising right at the beach, but not one of them would, would actually bend down, pick up a plastic bottle and throw it in the trash. They exercise, they jog and they do all kinds of things, but nobody participates to keep the uh, place clean. So I would say actually, and uh, we deserve a praise for uh, keep the. Uh, <laughs> you don't uh, have to praise us, but. <laughs> uh, to keep our planet clean. And when we hear people talking about minimalist, minimalist, tiny living, it's kind of hip right now. Actually, it's very hip right now. We've been living like that since we built our boat and moved on, and it's kind of it's kind of funny to us how people talk about it now. It is the same thing about YouTube. A lot of young people right now wants to become a cruisers or buy yachts and go cruising because they want to make videos and they hope they get rich like some people did start making a good amount of money. But we've done it in long before YouTube and long before it was, like Susan says, popular for no other reason except because you chose that type of a lifestyle. And another thing, um, a lot of people talk about you know generating a lot of excess trash and plastic and so forth. 
how about don't buy so much stuff don't buy every single newest camera drone and every kind of plastic crap out there telephone and so forth because all those things have to be put into a landfill so try to buy something that's good in the first place if you can repair it try to repair it but don't buy all the latest gadgets because that also contributes to after all, is your story what counts, not how good of a camera you have or what is the newest gadget. Okay, everybody, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video, but mainly we hope you got something out of it. And if you did, don't forget to leave a comment and a thumb up. And we know that these days when you talk about the environment, people get all worked up about it, so please try to keep the comments respectful. We like to hear from people that want to have an engaging conversation. And before we go, we'd like to once again thank all the people that support our channel through Patreon and PayPal. We really appreciate your support, guys, and we will see you all next time. Bye-bye.